And here we have the package from JLC PCB. Note that I have already opened the package. It did came in perfect condition, I must say. So this is a pre-opened package to see what was inside. But it is time to do the video. So it's time to order this. And of course you can go to Stuart's own page and look at his video. But I'm going to show you a little bit quick as well. When you go to Stuart Pitawai's GitHub place, you need to make sure that you go into DIY BMS V4 and you choose the branch ELC PCB assembly. When you do that, you should download it all. That's the easiest way to do it. And you make sure to actually extract the folder. So when you have gone to GLC PCB, you will need to add the Gerber file. And you go into the folder that where you extracted it. You go into the circuit and Gerber and press the Gerber zip file. So when that's done, it should be shown the boards that you are going to order. In this case, that's the monitor boards, cell modules. And you go down and you leave most of the things here as it is. And you press SMT assembly, you press assemble top side and the holes should be handled by the customer. You confirm and now it's time to add the boom file and the CPL file. You start by adding the boom file. And in the circuit folder, you will have the boom file and you will also have the CPL file. When that's done, you press the next. And you will see all the components that are in the list that should be set up and be able to be used. And you will see that there is 21 parts detected and only 20 parts are confirmed and one inventory shortage. Then we need to go down and see what the components are in shortage. And in this case, it is the Athena itself. That's very, very common. It happens almost all the time. And that's also the ship that I soldered onto the boards earlier in this video. So you go down and press the next. And then it's just a matter of actually ordering it. You need to make sure that everything sits as it should and it looks to be fine. You save it to cart. And it's now time to check out. If you want to, you can go to Secure Checkout and use my promotion code down below in the description. That will give me a couple of bucks back. Or if you even rather will give Stuart, the author of this BMS system, some credits. You should check his video and the links down below out. And he have a promotion code as well. When doing this, of course, this is only one of the boards. You need to have the master board as well. So don't forget to order that also. In this case, this is the monitor board. So guys, I think we need to step back a little bit because I do understand that in the end of this video you will ask yourself, but what things do I need to order this? On the page here you will see the details or the things that I think you should be able to order to get this going. So I have written together a little bit of a list of all the gears that you need for a 14S setup. And that's basically one of the more common ones. And down below in the description, I have links both to eBay and AliExpress to order most of the stuff needed. But still, you need to go to JLCPCB's website to order the boards itself and wait for them to arrive as well. So let's get back to actually work on the things. So now let's get back to see what I got from JLCPCB and see how we can assemble it and get it working together. JLCPCB have done a great work, I must say. So let's take a look at what I have received. As you can see, I have already opened it all up. Um, and here we have the cell modules itself. They are nicely taped in the back side and they were wrapped in this plastic. And they came really, really neatly packaged. If we take a look at the cell modules itself, you can see that everything is mounted except for the ship itself, the CPU, and the connectors on the side here the programming pin and the external sensor pins. So that is something that we need to take and do. I also ordered a couple of controllers. Um, of course, you have a minimum quantity that you can order. It's same goes here. Everything here is mounted except for the header pins, the connectors to the TXRX, the battery connector, and of course, the jumper if you're going to mount the Wemos Mini on top here. This one fits actually the 32 and the 8266. But today we are going to solder everything up. So let's start with soldering the controller just a little bit quickly. So here we have the controller and here we also have the ESP that I'm going to use. 
the ESP that I'm going to use is the 8266. And as I said, you can use the 32 as well, but currently the 8266 works just fine and it's easily swapped out later on. So what we need to do, you can solder this directly on top of here by just adding header pins like this. And then put that on top here. But I want it to sit so I can exchange it if needed and program it on the outside. So I'm going to add this kind of pins here. And on this one here, we add those. So let's put them in. So let, let's start from the underside. There we go. Now we need to add the extra wiring here. I recommend to buy a set of this. So we have the wiring here. And we're going to add them. Um, I bought the wrong one by the way, guys. So you should have the headers that are bent. So we take something to hold them like this. And on that top there you connect the relay part. So if you want that, you add that now as well. There we have the master unit assembled. We have the RX, we have the TX. And then we have debug and Wi-Fi reset button there. Uh, I'm not going to use them either, so let's start with this one. The next part is actually to dig into the actual slave boards. And they come in this very neat little package like this. Uh, so if we take a look at one, they are also pre-solar basically and everything is tied on here except for the microcontroller that's in itself. We also need to add the contacts here and then we need to add a header for programming and if you want external sensors you have those there. We will start with adding this small chip here and I bought them in a roll like this. So you have all the chips here. And just make sure that you get the right one and you don't get any fakes. And this one is small. So it's not that easy. It might be a problem depending on how you want to solve this. So I really hope you can see this now. Um, what I generally do if I don't reflow it, is I take my soldering iron, make sure it is clean, and then I just take one of the places and just add a tad bit of solder on that. Then I go back and I take this chip and I place it on top. And this can be a little bit tricky, especially when you have your camera in a way. So I put it on top like that. And then I press my finger on it. And then I just make sure I have a clean tip and it is a little bit wet. And I put that wetness onto that one. Dink. And it, I could feel that it sank down onto the pad. Make sure that it sits straight and it looks like it actually sits straight. Um, I'm using solder that is with flux core. If you don't have that you can basically just put it on yourself. But I, I like this solder and it works really really great. So I, I actually start, make sure that as well the tip is a little bit wet. And I just dab it slightly, slightly, slightly on each of the tip. And since this board is such a good quality, it's not really a problem to get this to flow. And you don't have to be that worried about it creating a, a joint between the pads either. Because as long as you clip, keep the tip clean, this, this will work out. Like that. It almost look professional. There we go. And then you need a couple of more of these. TX, RX, and battery. And then I put something on top of it, turn it around, 
so I can solder it. Next part is the header for programming. Flip it around and solder it. If you need the extra headers here, please add them directly. I don't need them. Not currently. When twisting the wires I use a vise like this one and I just gently clamp it in like that. I then take my drilling machine, put it in and I just quickly twist it. Doing that you get this very very nice twisted wire that will work perfectly fine for the data cables. When that's done, you get this. A lot of wires going back and forth. It's now time to program everything, and I'm using this tiny AVR programmer. And the headers that come with it are male headers, and I have already soldered male headers on that monitor modules itself. So I'm going to actually add in female headers, and I like those better to actually attach them. So I'm cutting that up, and then it's actually time to just solder them into place on the programmer. And I'm sorry for the image quality or video quality, it's just, I used the wrong camera. And programming is easy and you can see you can do it either directly where they are and on the board itself. But beware of actually making sure that the pads on the board, it's properly hooked up or is properly soldered together. Because if they aren't, you will not be able to program. So programming this stuff is pretty simple I would say. As you can see here I'm on my GitHub and I have forked this from Stuart Pitaway and that's where you should be downloading the data from or the actual code from unless you want to try out something that I have done. Currently I'm at the same level as Stuart so that's not a problem. I will be fetching the code from here as you can see and you need to put them somewhere so I have created a platform IO folder where I have everything, so I run git clone and I download it and of course you need to have some kind of git software on your computer running. When you're cloning this it will download all the data to your uh, computer itself. When that's done you will open up Visual Studio Code and then you go to extensions and make sure that you have the platform IO extension installed. If you haven't done that already you install it right now. Take the file menu and open folder and pick the folder that you just downloaded. In my case this is the one here. You choose that folder and open it up. And when this dialog pops up you press open workspace.
Depending on how you have your computer and how fast it, this may take some time before everything is built in the background. When that's done, you can see that you have the ESP controller here and you have the module itself. We will start with programming the modules. So I will be picking the module here. And depending on how this is set up and what programmer you have, you may get an error when running this. In the platform I.O., you can actually define what type of programmer you are going to use. And you have the programmer, let's see, right about here. Currently, by default, it's using the USB ASP, but I am using the USB Tiny that you have seen earlier. This is the USB Tiny. So we need to change it, but I will show you the error first. To build this and upload all the data here, you go to this alien symbol here, and you will be able to get all the different versions that you can build and upload to. If, you, if those doesn't show up when you have pressed it, that's most likely because Visual Studio haven't finished rebuilding or re-indexing everything yet. In my setup, I'm running the 421 version of the hardware. So I press that one and I have to wait a little bit because now it's actually doing a lot more job in the background. And when this shows up, you have different options like build, upload and monitor. In my case, I will start with the build part and you will see that it starts building in the bottom here. So you now have to wait for everything and you may see errors like that one, but that's not the issue as long as they don't get read. What you are waiting for is this. It says success. When that's done, you know that you can build everything and you have a binary that you can upload to your system. So you then take your device here and you can look at it and you press upload. If the correct upload or the correct device itself is chosen, it will go green down here. If it isn't, it will show something like this. And you can see that it could not find a USB device. So I go in here and I change it to USB tiny. I save the file and I press upload again. So hopefully it will work out and this device will now start blinking green. And it does. As you can see, green and blue is now going on and you can see that it is writing in the bottom there. Beware of when you're programming the, this that you don't have it hooked up to any battery. So you need to program this as standalone without the battery hooked up. When the program is done, it will read as well to make sure that the data is not corrupted. And when it's done, it comes up as success again. So go ahead and program all your slaves or all your cell modules like this. Next part now is to actually burn and install the firmware on the ESP controller itself. In my case, I'm using the VMOS Mini. As you can see, I have it hooked up here. And what you then do is you go to the project task itself and choose the ESP controller. And I recommend to press on the platform IO. Depending on if your alien shows up with a question mark or a, or a clock, you have to wait a little bit before everything is rendered. But when that's done, you can press it and you will get in the project task, the ENV ESP8266 D1 Mini. You can build it first or you can press upload it. I will press upload directly because upload actually builds as well. So let's do that and see what happens. So if you check down below here, and I know that I missed to show you guys this bottom link earlier, and I'm sorry for that, but now you can see it at least. And let's see what goes on. It compiles everything. A couple of warnings, they are fine. And you can see I get an error. And you can also see that I can't open the port because it cannot find the program or ESP board. And that's pretty simple because if you go into here, you will see that the ports that is available is not COM3, it's actually COM5. And if we look at the configuration in the platform IO, you can see that here that the upper port is defined as COM3. So you need to change that based on your setup. So I will be changing that to COM5. Save the file and we press upload again. And if everything works out, it should be recompiling everything and uploading it to the VMOS menu. And you can now see that it's blinking while it's writing. So that's working fine as well. So when that's done, we need to unplug the device and we will reconnect it up again. And I will do the initial install now. And here we have DIY BMS controller. So we log on to that one and that works fine. And then we surf to 192, 168.4.1, I think. 
And here we can see the SSID, and I'm going to choose so this ends up on IT. And then we insert the password. No, this is not a complex password for this setup. And hopefully it now ends up on my network. So by going into my wireless or my Wi-Fi setup itself, I can look at clients that have lastly connected and can see that I have DIY BMS here. So if we take that IP and we log on to it, we will most likely end up to this controller and this is basically how it looks. Currently on this setup here, you can see that I have no modules to reply and that's because this does not have anything hooked up. It's still hanging here in my cable, you could say. So let's hook up a, a bigger module and just show you very, very quickly how this looks like. But today I'm not going to go into exactly how you configure everything, but this is a quick setup. And as you can see, it starts to balance here directly, and that's because that cell most likely is above 4.1 volt. And the fault code currently starts to balance at 4.1 volt. After you have done this, and program the D1 Mini, it's time to configure it up. So let's hook this up again. I have now hooked in one of my test boards here, as you can see. It's the one with three modules installed and with a relay board. So let's take a look at how this looks like. And as you can see here, it complains about finding three modules, but I only configure one, and it also con is complaining a little bit about module bypass voltage is different to global settings. So let's do a quick setup here, and first change this to three, and save that one. And hopefully the big red one into the left here will go away. Uh, as you can see, controller found three modules, and waiting for modules to reply and it talks a little bit back and forth, and now that is fine. The next one is actually the, the global setting that we should change, and we go into modules here, and you can see that we have the different modules. You can see the voltages and everything for them set up, and we need to set the bypass threshold here, and currently it sets to 4.1 volt default, and you can see that they are just above, so let's save those settings. And that one disappeared as well. And now basically you have all the modules here running on bank zero and everything. And you can also see how much capacity that is balanced. And that's really good for you guys that want to know what's going on in your battery bank. Uh, and that's basically it. If everything works, it should show up with three now. And there it came. And you can do it in 3D as well if you want, or you can go in 2D. This is the basic setup, and of course, that one starts to balance because that one went above 4.1 volt. But let's leave it like that. And the rules, of course, you here have here as well. Um, you can set different things like setting up the relays and everything, and that should work as it should. So this is the basic DIY BMS. Um, quite easy to set up, quite easy to get the boards. Uh, of course, you need to solder some currently. Uh, in this current version with the ESP8266, this is the basic functionality. You don't have any shunt or anything like that currently, but I guess that will come in the near future. If you want me to do more videos about how you configure it, how you set it up on a battery bank in bigger scale, feel free to leave a comment down below. If you have any suggestions of what I should show you guys, don't forget to leave that as well. So guys, JLC PCB are awesome. If I wouldn't have been able to order this type of boards from them, I would never have built this BMS. You also take a look at this quick video of one of their factories. As but looking at their equipment that they have there, I mean, it can't be compared to what we DIYers have at our home. It's such a difference between the equipment that I have, for instance. I mean, I would never be able to do a board like this, not even on my CNC machine. So if you have a project or some idea that you want to get going on, you really should look into their site. And it's not that hard to actually order anything. And if you go to GitHub, you will find a lot of examples of boards ready with manufacturing details and everything like the DIY BMS that I assembled in this video.
It's just a matter of actually picking the files and following Stuart's video regarding how to order. And you will have the boards in your hand just quite a few days later. Let's get back to the build. I solder with soldering irons in mainly. I don't do anything else. So for me it's crucial that I have as little as possible to solder. And in this case the only thing that they couldn't assemble at the time are the whole, whole through components of course. But this chip they don't have in the store and therefore I have to solder that one. With that said, it doesn't take many minutes to build something like this. What you see here on this board is my test board for a 2x14S setup. I have 14S on this side and I will be adding 14 more batteries on this side to be able to test it fully. I also built a smaller variant. As you can see here, here I have a 3S variant with 3 batteries, 3 cell monitors, but I also added the relay port. This one is what I used in the beginning when I tested the discharge current system. And to be able to discharge continuously I added this fan on top like this to cool down the cell monitors. And that is actually controlled by the relay bank. So if any one of those get too hot it enables the relay to turn this fan on. And once again made possible by GLCPCB. This board on the other hand is I, something that I bought from eBay otherwise, but the main board and the sleigh board here or the client or the cell monitor boards are manufactured via GLC PCB. Other things that I have used from GLC PCB is I ordered this type of boards uh, a couple of weeks ago. And I mean, I literally built this on the Sunday, ordered them on a Sunday evening, and then a couple of days later I had them in my mailbox. And this type here is actually, uh, it looks something like this where an Arduino screen and three cell modules. So you can guess what this is. On the back side you attach the TP4056 and here you have the resistors that actually handles the discharge current. This is basically a discharge board that you can hook up in series as many as you want and be controlled by an ESP. And once again, couldn't have been possible without GLC PCB. In this case I didn't utilize to attach the components because the components I have here are, are rather large. But you can do both. 